All right, here in part two of day one of our sustainability challenge, we're gonna go over some rating system updates. Here we are late in 2022. What do you need to know about programs like LEAD and WELL and FITWELL and more? We're not gonna cover all of them. There are so many out there across the world, but we're gonna pick the top five plus that we think you need the Cliff Notes on. So let's talk about LEAD first. Many of you are LEAD professionals. I've made my career around green buildings, especially LEAD, but now we're getting into a lot of other rating systems too. So LEAD has been around, right, for 22 years now. The first LEAD projects were certified in the year 2000. Let's give you some updates though on what's happened recently and a peek at what's coming next year in 2023. So LEAD, <coughs> on the new construction side, or LEED, BD plus C, Building Design and Construction. While most of your projects are still gonna be doing LEED version four, you can go ahead and pull forward some LEED version 4.1 credits, or you could do all of LEED version 4.1. Honestly, as an advanced user of LEED and our consultants at our SIG team, you know, we like to just pull forward the best parts of LEED version 4.1 into a LEED version four project. So lead for new construction, thankfully, many uh, large corporate users are planning way ahead with their bank build outs, with their new towers that they're building in different cities. And we're actually still seeing quite a bit of growth in the lead VD plus C rating system. A little peek ahead though on the lead for new construction because the team at the US Green Building Council and some change in leadership has really been focused on how do we incorporate decarbonization? How do we incorporate embodied carbon? How do we incorporate equity? So yes, the next iteration of LEED, maybe it'll be called LEED version five, kind of like iPhone, what's next? Well, LEED version five, don't worry, won't be until late 2023, best case. But I know a lot of colleagues at the US Green Building Council working hard right now, kind of getting back to some, some grassroots, going out to the advanced users and the new users of LEED to see how can we make this even more accommodating while raising the bar on some of these items, again, decarbonization, embodied carbon, equity, and more. So that's a peek on the lead for new construction side. The next major update though, wouldn't be until late next year. Lead for existing buildings, one of my favorite programs, some call it lead EB, lead EB O plus M, those in the know call it lead EBOM. Well, really there's two paths now to get that plaque to prove that you are operating green day to day. You can do LEED certification path, which is 110 possible points. There's prerequisites, things you have to do. Save a certain amount of energy using the Energy Star EPA tool. Save a certain amount of water in those restrooms. If you haven't changed out those porcelain toilets and urinals since the 80s, you're not gonna be able to meet the prerequisite. You're gonna to have to do a capital project to just meet the minimum requirements and then outside fresh air. Those are three of the early challenges to take an existing building or even a recently built building to prove to industry you operate green day to day. We are on lead version four for certification path, 110 points possible, the prerequisites, but then there's also performance path. Some of you are familiar with ARC or what we really call lead EB version 4.1 using the ARC SCORU tool that is really six main categories. It is all about actual performance. So please note, in 2022, you can earn the lead for existing building plaque two ways now. Certification path, think of the 110 point scorecard, or performance path. That's where we are just inputting actual performance of that asset in order to recertify every three years for ARC, or every five years, up to five years for lead EV certification path you still have to make sure you're operating your buildings green day to day. So let's talk about healthy buildings or what I like to call wellness real estate. Six, seven years ago, we saw well and fit well, only one L on that side, come on the scene. These two programs are not related to LEED. However, if you've done a LEED project, you have about a 30 plus percent head start into these wellness programs. Well, full plaque, okay, is where we design and build and could even operate a healthy building, a healthy space. We have medical research from the Mayo Clinic, Cleveland Clinic, the Well Living Lab, all behind that program. Again, think a full 
comprehensive certification with an actual testing in the field by the well performance testing agent and the well assessor team. At the same time though, we saw FITWELL, F-I-T-W-E-L. This is CDC backed research, very good program, even more about getting your occupants of your building up, moving, and having some healthy policies in place. So we've seen both WELL and FITWELL move from their version ones, younger healthy building programs, onto their next iteration to their version twos or two plus. But what happened, right? Over the last two and a half years, we had a pandemic. Once the pandemic set in, both of these programs, even LEAD a little bit, came out with a pandemic response program. So we have WELL Health Safety Rating, or WELL HSR, which we focus on 25 best practice opportunities and policies. You have to earn 17 out of the 25 in order to get a seal. So when you walk into your building, some of you, of course, returning to work, maybe in a hybrid two, three days a week, and you see a seal that says WELL Health Safety Rating, you know that they've done a great job with their pandemic response. FitWell has FitWell Viral Response Module, VRM, which is very similar. These are pandemic response programs that we don't want to just do when there's a pandemic. We want to keep up these best practices over time. You do have to recertify these SEALs every year, and that's what we're working on with some of our portfolio real estate clients right now. We did this during the pandemic. Are we going to keep it up? And thankfully, we're seeing a lot of our real estate portfolios, yes. We're going to keep up these SEALs. Let's get our buildings reoccupied. So to recap, well and fit well, full certification, going strong with new buildings, new tenant buildouts, and especially existing multi-tenant on the fit well, full certification side. But the seals, you're still gonna see those, some properties just now proving, yes, yeah, see, this is a healthy place to come back to work, but you have to recertify the seals every year and the certifications, the full plaques over here every three years. Next, let's talk about GRESB or GRESBY. Frankly, the industry actually uh, calls it out both ways. So with GRESB, you know, in the simplest of terms, how green is your portfolio? A lot of our real estate clients want to attract investors and really have to prove, here's what we do to make this a green portfolio, but not just our impact, right? Our quantitative side of things, energy, water, waste, impact of the buildings in that portfolio, but also the qualitative side, the policy side, how we run things, how we make decisions, even extra points for how your board of directors is compensated for sustainability decisions. So we're seeing tremendous growth with those portfolios, it's optional, that report into GRES. So your portfolio, your fund can be scored. We've seen in the last few years a couple of new modules around healthy buildings and around resiliency that have been added to GRESV and now you have to answer those questions. Now they will be scored. And so that's a good example of not just one building at a time earning a lead plaque, earning an Energy Star certification, earning a well or fit well plaque. We still, of course, as we've just updated, you have to focus there one asset at a time, but now this can start aggregating and the more of your portfolio that has earned one of these certifications, the more actually points you can get within one of the sections within GRES. But don't forget, there is still the quantitative side of GRES. We've added up those certifications, but at the end of the day, no matter what, even if you don't have the plaques, save energy, save water, improve your recycling, on down the list of the actual impact and greenhouse gas emissions tied to your real estate. That, of course, is one of the biggest chunks of points you're going to get as your portfolio is scored within GRES. At SIG, we've actually broken out our ESG team. We've been building a bigger team around just that initiative. Because frankly, if you were to ask me, hey, Charlie, is there a lead rule book for the world? Over the last five years, I'd say, well, no. I would have told you to align with the UN Sustainable Development Goals pick three or four that are important to your company out of the 17 UN SDGs and align with that. Many companies do, many real estate portfolios do. Heck, entire you know Fortune 100 companies, entire cities will not only align with the Paris Climate Accord, even when maybe your country gets off of that, depending on leadership, and then get back on that, it's, it's really come down to the UN SDGs. So make sure you're reading up on that 
But I'd say new territory, as you've seen a tremendous amount of legislation, we talked about that in video one, around ESG. <clears throat> so something like GRESP, a program like that, where you actually are getting scored, is you as a real estate portfolio putting yourself out there to get scored on your ESG, but across the portfolio and your operations. We also do work and have other programs like CDP, Carbon Disclosure Project, TCFD, and many more that you'll want to read up on if you're involved with portfolio, real estate, or just corporate sustainability. New to our cliff notes that we bring to all of you is actually BREAM, or BREAM, uh, said both ways. Uh, believe it or not, uh, BRE in the UK and BREAM was first started in 1990. So it was actually out there before LEED. Some might say that, you know, LEED mimicked BREAM a little bit. Um, here's the reality. In the US, BREAM US didn't come out until about 2016. But I would argue that the US Green Building Council in LEED, quite the brand, that I'm a fan of, if you can't tell. Um, they kept Bream out for a long time. But I think it's safe to say there have been some projects over the last five, six years, but in the last 18 to 24 months, for our large portfolio clients, they are asking for Bream, not just as an alternative to lead, but as they attract European and international investors that are used to Bream, they want some of their assets in the United States to earn that certification instead. So I think a trend we're seeing is while some new buildings in the U.S. may be going for a BREAM certification, I'd say that's a little smaller. It's picking up. It's the BREAM in use or existing buildings that we are seeing quite a bit of popularity around. It's a good program. You know, we could argue comparable on overall price. It has different phases, different stages. But just know a few cliff notes here. <clears throat> you can go from an acceptable building, kind of one star, to an outstanding building, six stars. Now, for a little more information about Bream, especially here in the US, we're gonna put some resources here that you can go read up more. So on Friday, when we close out, we're gonna show you what's next next. But what's imminent, what's happening right now that maybe is not already written into programs like LEED or WELL or GRES? It's some topics we're going to hit on this week in the Sustainability Challenge. For example, tomorrow we're going to talk all about carbon, the difference between operating carbon and efficiency, embodied carbon on the material side, the supply chain, even during construction. We'll talk a little bit this week about net zero buildings and where there's mandates lining up. But as we take a look at what's next for LEED, they are going to force you down the road, I'll shoot the messenger, to have a net zero readiness plan. That's going to come to us probably later next year with programs like LEED. So stay tuned. Thanks for being a part of the challenge. We'll see you tomorrow all about carbon.